everybody, it's Tyler here at the Minnesota Signature Event, checking in with 10B Exothermic Blaze, coming in out of Washington team. A lot of experience uh, from uh, Signature Events of the past, so we're really looking forward to see how they do. I love their robot overall. A uh, lot of great things that are constructed here that we'll be talking about. Uh, this arm area and how they're transferring that has been working out really well. A lot of great integrations for it. And uh, pay attention to when they talk about their motor distribution as well, too, and what they're going through on that. So let's learn more about Exothermic Blaze coming up here on Pips and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Ayush, let's break down this robot a bit more. Talk to me about what you're rocking for a drivetrain, and then I'd love to hear more about your locking clamp you have in the back of your bot. Uh, so our drivetrain is a 450 RPM on 3.25 inch wheels uh, drive, and it's a lot faster than many other teams uh, that many other teams are running, but we chose to run it because historically it's worked out really well for us. We used the same speed last year and the year before, and it was always really, really consistent. and. Um, the, having being able to have two tractions on each side of the drive makes it really, really nice for it. So having set, uh, centered turning as well as just not being able to be pushed when you're really sitting in those corners and makes it really fun to drive. Uh, and our clamp on the back, uh, as you can see, it, the, the bar goes really low and that is to help the, gear, the robot sort of, like the goal sort of slide in in that gap and those hooks right there. Uh, make it so when we clamp down, it really just holds that goal in, really locks it, and um, the back ones make it so it actually angles in really, really well. Can we see that actually happen? Can you put a goal yeah, in? Yeah, of course. Um, so, no, there's there. Is there an No. We do not have air. Oh, that's okay. So, right, so. And then just, uh, it like holds in and like angles up with the when the air is like pushing on it. So it's not at a perfect, like not flat, it's a slight angle. And that allows us to just really have good scoring, make it harder to steal from, and really nice. And the really cool feature of this is actually this over center lock right there. So when it locks down, it really, this over that bar, it's like an uh, off centered four bar. So it really pushes down on that. And you can't really push it up from here, but you can push it up from here. So it makes it really hard to steal from and just a really consistent clamp overall. So a lot of things to talk to you are, you know, obviously running a clamp, but we haven't seen too much of what you have as well too. What made you want to go that route? Like what was kind of that aha moment for you? Uh, so for us, it was, uh, we used to have a clamp that would just directly push down. Sure. Very, very simple, we very nice. Uh, but what we realized is, hey, this game seems to be really, really gameplay defense heavy, right? Just from the game reveal and just the, um, the amount of stuff you could do in the game. And we, and for us, it was like, hey, it, what, we should try and make our make it really hard to steal the goal from our robot. So just having that over center lock really just lock down and make it. You can slide it, but you can't really take it out at all. Makes it like really really hard to like steal, and that's one of the big things we really like about the clamp. Yeah, obviously very locked in on that. So uh, great job in the design for that, Caitlin. Love to hear more about the uh, intake. Such a consistent intake that you've uh, developed here. So let's break down a couple of the stages that you're running here. Yeah. So for our intake for our first stage. We have a piece of poly here, so especially during autos for the corner rings, it's very easy to wedge underneath the corners, like here, underneath the rings to grab it during autonomous. Um, very similar to what 10C did during spin up, we have our uh, typical flex, week, uh, flex wheel intake, also with counter rollers at the bottom to increase surface area when uh, intaking rings, and also helps us pick up rings a lot easier compared to other teams. Other teams here at Mall America have had to drive into rings very often to try and gain control. Um, for us, we have a very smooth pickup. It's very easy to um, intake those onto our goal. Uh, moving on to our second stage, very similar to 1469A and back in tipping point with the hook intake. Uh, as you can see here with our fins, we have bent them a little bit so that when we intake, it's very easy to pull the rings down onto the goal. This is better for um, securing the rings onto the goal itself to make sure that it doesn't you know, like wobble here onto the actual goal itself. A lot of teams that we've seen and talked to um, on these hooks here don't have really compliant hooks. They tend to be very rigid on it. So when you were designing, what made you want to go with a little bit of compliancy on it? Uh, we just want to make sure it had like good pickup. I mean, we wanted it to be very reliable. Um, we saw that like other people, um, it was like very, 
their hooks were very like weak. Um, we just wanted to make sure that ours was very secure. There was a huge chance of rings falling off, especially when we were getting pushed around. So we want to make sure that it's reliable. Um, yeah, we just want to, yeah. So uh, we got to pass over and start wrap up with this robot to uh, Tony talk about the uh, arm that you're doing. Uh, the the wall stakes have been a very interesting part of this game here. We've seen some matches where they're you know used as that way to kind of equalize the positive goals, and sometimes it's not at all. But uh, your team has uh, really developed something quite nice here. So I'd love to see how that process works out within your robot. Yeah, sure. Um, so because we only have a 5.5 watt motor for our claw, our claw and our two bar, obviously it makes some things a little bit more difficult for us because obviously we don't have that power of that 11 watt motor and we uh, you, um, we kind of cope with this by having a 1 to 7 gear ratio here which makes it really uh, fine for us to score on high stakes and alliance stakes and we also have like really aggressive banding here so it's actually easier to pull up than pull down and um, yeah we also load onto this claw here using our redirect system so the intake spins up and then this slides down the intake and into our claw so basically we can load our claw through our intake and it makes it a lot easier for me as a driver to just pick up rings and score on high stakes. Can we well. see what that process looks like too? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so basically it just comes in, comes in and then rolls back down through the intake. And um, what's really good about that, obviously, it's just, it's just easier for the driver to not have as many controls that it has to focus on. And then we just have a very simple claw, um, if you can lift it up for me. Um, so here, um, we just have a very simple claw, uh, you know, when the stake comes in, it just pushes up and out from the stake. And so when we push down, it goes through and into our uh, stake. So basically, very simple design. And yeah, it's worked, been really consistent for us. And we only really have to use it when we need it because we prioritize our goals. So yeah, it works. It does its intended purpose and it's great for that. We mentioned a little bit about the uh, motor distribution. Anything else that you want to cover on that? Uh, yeah, sure. So, um, as Caitlin talked about earlier, we have our intake here, and our intake has a 16.5 watt uh, intake. Uh, we decided this because we want to prioritize like having a touch and, touch and go uh, kind of control for rings. And so, um, obviously, it's kind of different from other teams. There's teams like you know 10 Ton W, who have like a similar bot, but their motor distribution is very different. But what we saw is uh, what we saw was by having a 16.5 watt intake. Uh, our match play, especially with goals, is a lot better since we can score goals a lot faster. And also since high stakes aren't really used unless they're necessary, um, that 5.5 watt motor is like enough for its job. All right, well, excellent Dermot Garage. Thank you so much for telling us more about your robot and your team. Good luck here at the Minnesota uh, SIG event. Uh, but you got a big season ahead as well too, so can't wait to see that continual progress and how you adapt to the new meta of what high stakes is as well. So thanks for telling us about it. Good luck the rest of the way. Got you. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected on roboticsnetwork.com and all the social links that you see above here and check out some of our new merchandise options that are both fun and robotics related as well too both on our website and right underneath this youtube video